is helpful. 50% of professional occupations are occupied by women, but in the technology sector, it's less than 24%. So when you look at the impact of these trends and see what it, it sort of predicts of the technology sector, it says that key talent is deselecting itself and not coming to the table. That means that for the technology sector, innovation can only be sub-optimized. It is therefore really, really important that we continue to have programs like the one we have today as we acknowledge role models and recognize the efforts of women. I love startups, I love launches, and one of the things that I love about tech is that it's okay to push the envelope. So, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. Please welcome our panelists, Lucinda, Yoki, Rebecca, and Trish. What are the areas of technology you believe represent the biggest opportunities for innovation and breakthroughs in the current economy? Yeah, one of the things that has become 40% of our portfolio now is this kind of area called computational biology. It's really about taking what was typically drug discovery on a bench with test tubes and work for a long time to try to find a drug that might be successful for the FDA and then take it to market. And there's platforms now and analytics and a lot of really powerful data and platforms that can really crunch that data in kind of amazing speeds that can test five different options in terms of the drug and also target it to the right human that it should be targeted for so as opposed to issuing Lipitor for the public. You can issue Lipitor and say it's for specifically this particular set of genomes that it should be mapped to. So we have probably seven or eight plays that kind of circle around that kind of theme. So we're at this amazing juncture in technology where a lot of technology is now kind of commodity. Um, and we are bringing together that with the social element. And what are the possibilities that come out from that? And how are women actually uniquely qualified to lead and or think in that particular space and kind of push the pioneering space of social computing to the next level and into things that we use every day and into things that we haven't even thought about using technology for yet? It's, it's hard, right? It's hard for all of us. We have kids probably, you're here, have been sitting at home or something or paid some money to your husband or something, sorry. <laughs> 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 like the Washington Women's Foundation. But I haven't seen a lot of women investment firms where we're pulling together our funds to do startups, like big startups, not, you know, 5,000 here, 10,000 there, like million dollar, you know, two million dollars, like really giving the money. So I think that if those of you out there have the means to come together and set up a fund like that and may have a, a mission that says you're only going to fund women businesses. That's not illegal. You can do that. <laughs> and, and go after those businesses and give the women confidence to apply to your fund. We have to start, we have to do it ourselves. We can't wait for somebody to do it for us. We actually have talents to be in a leadership role in a different way from men sometimes. We care about changing the world sometimes a little bit more in general than men. It's generalization, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, those things actually really help. Um, but because of the time, because of, you know, sort of maybe some small thing that inhibits that one extra step from sort of realizing, or, you know, maybe you get an invitation, but just that day you just can't do it because of the kids or because of something else. My advice or my sort of thinking is that just do it. Sorry, I took on this. I stole that from Nike. Um, but, um, but seriously, I just feel like sometimes you just have to show your face. So women, can sh you know, show your face more. Show other women who are actually coming up to be in this role that you can do it. You have many kids. I have three kids. You know, just you just do it and show that indeed it's possible. Then you start getting lots of emails, you know, inquiries saying, "How do you do it?" And then you start explaining, you know, you just do it, and you, know, you go from there. And then I think that's the way to create more and more people to do it. 
I think it's an actual investment of companies, long-term investment in the K through 12 system to make sure that we're showing young women what this industry can be, what it is today, what it can be with their brain power. And it's upon us to grab on to those students and mentor them at that point. But to actually get women beyond, you know, kind of the mid-level range and into the executive ranges, you also need what we call sponsorship. And sponsorship is different from mentoring. Someone can mentor me and help me with my day-to-day. -day. My sponsor is usually somebody in my executive chain who's pulling me up behind them. And this is a really natural thing that happens with the majority culture. So in technology, it's usually white men. Um, because it's easy to pull your protege along with you. There's somebody that looks like you, there's a culture that encourages it, and most people don't even recognize that it's happening. But for women, yes, they need mentors, and then at some point they also need sponsors, people who are going to advocate for them and say, hey, you know, Trish is ready to take on that general manager of engineering job. You know, you should add her name to the hat. You should think about her as a qualified candidate. So it's great to talk about mentoring, and we should absolutely be involved. You can mentor people, peer mentor people around you. You can mentor people who are coming up behind you. But then if you're in a mid-level position, you need to look forward and figure out what your sponsorship is as well. You're confident in what it is you want to do. There are ways to get it done. And and also, you need to get that litmus test to make sure you're moving in the right direction from whoever. It doesn't matter what gender, what color, whatever it is, but people that you can count on to get that litmus test to, to say, okay, I'm taking the next step, that's right, I'm taking this step, that's right. You're gathering information. Uh, who knows? I'm thinking as this event evolves that it'll just get so big that I'll have to hold a custody. <laughs>